All right, today we'll be looking at post-war scientific technological developments after the war. So World War II had a lot of money thrown into military production. And out of these things, you get a lot of new scientific and technological breakthroughs. The Manhattan Project producing the atomic bomb is the best example. But we also get jet aircraft, radar, which you can see any day on the news when they do the weather, microwaves, computers, synthetic rubber. So all these things come out of military applications, military funding. So during the Cold War, this also stimulates it because we're having to match the Soviets. We produce the hydrogen bomb because the Soviets produce their atomic bombs. So we have to take the next step. We also go into the space race, which gets accelerated because in the 50s, 1957, Russia launches Sputnik, which is the first unmanned satellite. And this shows how far behind the U.S. has become. And the Soviets are also the first ones to do a manned space flight with Yuri Gagarin. And this really shows the United States has fallen behind in the space race. So we get more funding for the sciences. This speeds up our progress, and we kind of win the space race when we reach the moon first with Apollo 11 in 1969. And this keeps on going to today we have the International Space Station and planning further missions to Mars. Some good things that impact our daily lives are standard of living and consumer products. So microwaves come around, personal computers. The original computers used to fill up entire warehouse rooms. Nowadays I'm actually doing this on a very tiny, almost paper thin laptop. Even satellites. Sputnik was unable to communicate but it was a stable orbit man-made satellite. Now pretty much any channel you can want is broadcast to you from a satellite. So it shows that it starts as a military and kind of high-end science. Now it's very standard and consumers benefit from that. Also automobiles, air conditioning, these change um, travel especially and living conditions. Probably wouldn't have the massive amount of people we li have living in the south today if it wasn't for air conditioning. People couldn't live in desert areas like Phoenix without air conditioning. Um, this automobile culture and you, you see that with like how suburbs spread out from cities. This is impacting us with foreign oil because we developed a need, a demand for it higher than the supply we could supply. So now we're dependent on foreign oil for many things. We also get into nuclear energy, which is potentially cheap and available, but people worry about the safety concerns. Things like Chernobyl and Fukushima have shown issues with nuclear safety. There's also a lot of medical advancements in the post-war from the late 40s on. Penicillin was considered a miracle drug. For example, that's kind of a common thing to treat infections. Also, vaccines go into really high gear. The 1950s saw the polio vaccination where they, had, they eradicated the disease. They couldn't cure it, so if you were contracted polio before the vaccine, you sadly were stuck with it, but it prevented. The disease is almost extinct now. Um, new surgical techniques come about due to the need to treat soldiers quickly, like heart surgery. And these life-saving um, practices increases the population. So infant mortality rates fell. Children that would have not made it to adulthood make it to adulthood now through vaccines, medical technology. Even nowadays, people live into their 80s and 90s where that used to be very unheard of. And this has impacted society in several ways, which you can talk about in class. Agriculture. Food was in demand during the war, and with our growing population due to these medical advancements, food is still in demand, so we've had to have improved agriculture technology, pesticides, fertilizers, basically make sure our crops yield instead of dying with bugs. There are some environmental impacts from this, and they've kind of shied away from really using chemical products since the 1970s when it was shown that there are very bad long-term environmental complications. Thank you for watching that.